Let's uh, cross now to Cape Town, where I'm joined by Graham Bell. He joins us there. He's an old, he's from Old Mutual Equities to so give us perspective on the global market performance. Graham, good to have you with us today. Uh, just last week, all eyes were on China. A few weeks before, all eyes were on Greece. But tonight, all eyes on the U.S. Following the CPI data, uh, together with the FOMC minutes, which are highly anticipated to be released uh, later on this evening. Hi, Gugu. Yes, uh, all eyes on the U.S., but um, U.S. eyes on China. So the CPI data today, as you mentioned earlier, was 0.1% uh, up in a month uh, for the core rate as well. Uh, this was probably below expectations and was an indication that inflation is still not an issue, particularly following the prior two months where there had been quite a sharp uptick in headline inflation mainly because the oil price had bounced. But now the oil price has been coming back down again, and next month's CPI in the U.S. will incorporate that further decline in the oil price as well. So inflationary pressures are certainly not a big issue in the States, as also has been the case with wage pressures, where we've seen um, very muted wage increases um, and less than expected in the case of the employment cost index, the quarterly index that came out a couple of weeks ago. So the Fed minutes, we must remember that the Fed, the Fed meeting guided to a rate hike if there was some further improvement in the labor market. And we actually saw that some further improvement in the, in the last payrolls numbers. They, they were pretty good. They weren't stellar, but they were, they were good enough. But the other thing to remember is that the Chinese devaluation came after that Fed meeting and it was a surprise. So you know, everybody's been expecting that China might allow their currency to weaken a little bit or they might widen the band. Um, they were trying to become part of the SDR basket and so on. But the move that they made indicated that uh, there was a bigger devaluation in, in possibility and that that could continue for some time. And the, the problem with that is that you know, other currencies then uh, feel obliged to devalue as well. So China then effectively starts to export its, its deflation. And in fact, today you, you might have noticed that we saw two Asian currencies announce devaluations uh, in Vietnam, the Dong, and in Kazakhstan. And this is just a further sign of the, the pressures that this um, slightly unsuspect, uh, unexpected in, uh, cut in the uh, remember um, what devaluation in remember would have uh, around around Asia and other emerging markets. Graham, continuing with this theme of the influence that China continues to have on the market, do you think it will play much of an influence uh, uh, post the minutes we see today on the Fed's uh, decision for interest rates to hike up in September or push it further to December? <coughs> I think there is a chance they may delay it now. Um, there is actually a meeting in, in November as well. The Fed meets every six weeks, but usually they don't do a rate hike um, except in the quarterly meetings because that's when they have their press conference. So the early November one is highly unlikely. But there is a possibility now because um, you know, weaker currencies around the world mean a stronger dollar, and the dollar's already been strong, and a, a firmer dollar tends to rein in U.S. growth. And growth is the issue for, for the Fed. If, you know, if there's growth, then there could be inflationary pressures. And the currency is appreciating. That also helps to keep inflationary pressures at bay. So suddenly, the, it's become less certain now. I think you know, a month ago, two months ago, forecasts for the, for the Fed high converged very strongly on September. And that's been thrown into doubt now by the Chinese move. Having said that, I don't think it's the Chinese intention really to significantly devalue their currency. For one thing, Chinese corporates have uh, $700 billion worth of do dollar-denominated foreign debt. Um, so devaluation puts further pressure on them. And they've been going through a tough time recently because the economy has been slow and they have negative PPI. So I, I don't think that the intention of the, of the People's Bank of China is to have a significant dev devaluation. I think they'll let it ease off gently. And in due course, I think people will start to relax and stop worrying about it so much. And um, that will probably, assuming that the Fed, uh, that the U.S. Um, labor market data next month, the next payrolls data that comes out, is also as strong as the last one, then I think the chances of a Fed hike are still pretty high. Beyond that, of course, is the issue just what will the tra trajectory be? And uh, Janet Yellen has consistently 
guided to a much lower trajectory than in previous ra uh, rate hike cycles. And I think that will just still be the case. So always I go back to the point that you know, the, the rates are still very, very low. You've got 25 bit um, Fed funds rate. If they hike it, it gets to half a percent. If they hike it again, it's three quarters of a percent. These are all still very, very low interest rates. And if they do that slowly over time, then I don't think the markets are going to be too spooked. Just to close off with, though, uh, Graham, uh, looking at the global equities market, it does seem as though there's an increased uh, uh, vibe of volatility. Is that something that you think might still uh, be maintained on the market until we get some kind of clarity from the U.S.? Yeah, there's loads of blood <laughs> out there today, and the, 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 the all share indexes is uh, flirting with the 50,000 level, which is, um, you know, I mean, uh, 50,000 isn't necessarily a, a level that it has to hold, but it's, it is a kind of headline type of number. And, and markets have been weak, and um, I, I think it's not just volatility, they've been trending down recently as well. I, I think equity markets are starting to get reasonably good value again. And um, yes, I think the volatility will still be there, but I don't think it'll be extreme because a lot of this is is being priced in now. So uh, I've been a little bit surprised how weak it's, weak it's been, um, but I think that in due course it will settle and people will start to rethink and they will see some better values around there and I think the markets will start to regain their poise. Graham, thank you so much for your time today and analysis of the global market space. That was Graham Bell, strategist at Old Mutual Equities.